got here. This is interesting. We've got quite a few hyenas here today. We've got little cub out at the top. We've got what looks like January standing up. And then who have we got lying down? I can't see very nicely at this stage, but I know a lot of you who are the hyena experts will be able to tell me who that is lying down. And there's Intima at the back, up to no good as normal. And then our little cub right on the top that's just emerged out of the hole. I think it's got a bit of a fright when we arrive, but there's the little cub there. You're still looking quite skinny and bandy-legged. I'm a little bit worried about this cub at this stage. It looks as though it's not that well. Although, it looks better than the other day when we saw it. The other day when we saw it, it wasn't looking great. It was not walking nicely, but today it looks okay. Let's see when it walks. Hopefully it will be okay. But maybe some of you can try and ID the hyena lying down on its side because I'm not 100% sure who that is. It doesn't look like a very old hyena. The ears are all sort of intact and the spots are quite bright. So definitely not a very old hyena. But I'm super glad that this is active, considering that it wasn't active about half an hour ago. It's very, very cool that we've come here and everybody's out and about. And what are you sniffing? You can see how they've got noses to the wind. The wind is coming from our southwest at the moment. And so those noses are trying to pick up all the scent that is being blown by that wind. Hello. You've got to love hyena ears. Aren't they the coolest things? They're like big satellite dishes and they just move around all over the place. And hyenas are such comical creatures. I really enjoy spending time around them. Now, so I'm going to try and just go forward a little bit so we've got more access to that little cub as well. But I don't want to chase anybody away. So let's go there. You just tell me, Seb, when you can see all of them. How's that? Is that good? All right, cool. So there we go. That's... Is that not one of the most scenic dens that you can imagine? There's hyenas all over the place. Big view from here. I reckon this is the penthouse suite. Listen. Is that not the cutest thing in the whole world? <laughs> you are very cute. So for all of you that don't like hyenas, that can't... You can't not like them after something like that. That is the cutest thing in the world. This is a little hyena call, little hyena whoop from our tiny cub. And shame, I wonder if it's trying to call a certain individual. Maybe it's mom is trying to call to see where it is and to come back to the den. Now, of course, Intima is going to do her usual story and come and investigate what goes on. Hello, little one. You are getting very light in color now, starting to lose that black day by day. In fact, the more I see you, the less black you have on you. But what are you watching behind us? Is there another hyena coming? No, not that I can see. They definitely seem to be interested in something. They're sniffing heavily into this wind and they're all staring in that direction. Oh, no, lost our nerve. Not going to go that way. Is it Ribbon that's lying down there? It doesn't look like Ribbon. The ears are all okay. Not 100% sure. If anybody's got an ID on this particular hyena, it would be nice to know. Hashtag Safari Live on Twitter, but if you do have an idea, I would imagine you do know the hashtag already. But little mornings grooming, and it was probably a good idea just to come a little bit later in the morning. Now that the sun's out, that's why they probably are, just to get a bit of sunshine to warm up. Although inside that mound is the best place to be in a cold day like this because it'll be insulated, there won't be too much wind blowing. So it's the perfect place just to spend time. Now, Chitty Chatty Meg, you're wondering if they made this den. No, they wouldn't have made this um, structure themselves. That structure has been made by termites. So the termites would have s 
use their feces, their saliva and particles of soil to construct that massive mound. And isn't it incredible that that's a termite that has built something as large as that. What then happens is you either get things like warthogs, aardvarks, pangolin, hyenas that will come and actually excavate out big furrows and big holes to be able to then have their little ones. So this has just been modified by hyenas after the termites have died off they then come in and take over and they utilize it for themselves. Once the hyenas move out after a while when it gets stinky and there's too much sort of defecation and bits of meat and things all around the den they move to another den site you'll find then it gets used by porcupines and you'll find even civets, genets. Now who is this? It's got lots of blood on its neck whoever this is. They've had a... see this hyena's got blood all over it and it looks like a very big scar on the right of its face. So I have no idea. I don't think I've ever seen that hyena before. I might have, but it doesn't look familiar to me in any way whatsoever. But it's got blood all over the face, so I wonder if it maybe stole something from someone somewhere along the line. So I'm going to reposition ourselves slightly. Roshni, um, the whooping sounds with these hyenas will differ slightly, but not too much. You'll find that they get deeper for the older hyenas than it is for the younger ones. And you'll find that they typically, when they have different sounds, it's normally to do if they're excited or not. So an excited call would be that more laughing sound that they get their name, their other name from, laughing hyena. That's where they get it from, is that they'll whoop and laugh and cackle and then sometimes they'll do that contact call is what you heard just now when this little one was calling is it's trying to contact its mom and I have really hope and it's it's a horrible thing to think but I really hope that that hyena that's dead north of Tamburti Dam I really hope it's not its mother and that it's crying out for milk I, that it'd just be the worst thing possible and, and a horrible thing to think. So we're going to banish that out of our minds and hope that that's not the case and that well, the little one just wants some food and is crying to mom for food. And there we go. It's just sitting there. The rest of them have all gone around the other side. Um, Seb, do you want me to go around the other side? Okay, let's try and see if we can get round. I don't know if we're going to get anywhere near those other ones, but let's try. They're kind of lying in a difficult spot there because the little two track that goes around the den is actually doesn't quite go to where they currently are lying. So I'm going to have to try and kind of figure out another way. And I think originally when this two track was made, this was made just to be able to get around the den and out of the sighting. It actually wasn't made to sort of get to where those hyenas are to view them. So we might just have to think about it different sort of structure or track that we use to get to this other side. I'm sure we can eventually make one that goes straight through. Now Cheryl you're wondering why the termite mounds here in Juma are much bigger than the Masai Mara. Now, Cheryl, it's probably to do with the type of termite we get here. So we get a certain species of termite called macrotermies, and that they tend to be the ones that build these big mounds. Remember that each termite species will have a different type of mound that they will build. So it's probably to do with the species of termite that we get here. I'm not sure of what species we actually see in the Masai Mara. I'm sure James will be able to tell us a little bit more. It could also be to do with the substrate that we get here. Maybe the substrate here actually bonds better with the saliva and the feces and it causes the mound to be a lot more structurally sound and therefore they can grow bigger ones. It could also be something to do with that. But I'm not 100% sure. Maybe James will have a better idea of why the mounds there get are so small and don't get used as frequently as what ours do or made as big as what ours do in this area. Now this female must be ribbon because Intima is busy suckling there so it's got to be ribbon and she's just had blood on her neck and kind of an odd shape that came from her right hand side so it is ribbon now that I can see the left hand side of her you can see the ribbon shape that gives her the name.
Ah, so Michael, you're saying the hyena that was standing up is not January, but Gwen's daughter, Hart. So that's quite cool to see. And I wonder where Gwen is then. A lot of you may not know, but Gwen is an older female and one of probably the lowest ranking member of the adult females. She is a hyena that we saw having a den around Cheetah Cut Line in February. And she then has disappeared since then. We haven't seen too many signs of Gwen since then. And this is one of her previous litters that she's had, one of her young ones called Hart. So that's nice to know. Thank you for that, Michael. It's very good of you. The hyenas are difficult. We, we don't see them as much as we would like to. And so recognizing them is hard for us. It's not easy to be able to see who's who. Um, I'm trying to learn them as quick as possible, but without seeing them as much as what we see the leopards or the lions, it becomes a little bit more difficult to remember who is who. And also, the spot patterns, to me, with hyenas, are, it's often I struggle with kind of recognizing certain spot patterns like I do with leopards. I don't know why that is the case, but it is the way it is. Some people are better at it than others. And so it's always nice when you guys take it interest and let us know who they are. Ginger, you're asking if, let's say, potentially that other one's mother didn't return, would any of these other females care for it? Unfortunately, the answer to that is no, they wouldn't. So these hyenas would actually just leave that cub to unfortunately die. Um, it's the way it goes out here. They don't allow mother their cubs. They're actually very defensive of their milk. You'll find if another little cub tried to come, this hyena would chase it away and try and get rid of it. So I've never seen hyenas suckling other cubs of, of from a different female, but you never know. Like I say, there's no rule book out here, as we've seen with that video that's going around at the moment where that wild lioness is suckling a leopard cub. You can never say never, but it's unlikely that they would suckle another cub from a different female. It doesn't only affect the prey animals. You would think that the predators wouldn't be so worried, but you can see the predators are just as affected by wind as what the prey animals are. When you get gusting wind like this, they also are picking up scent all the time. You could find that there's male lion had walked past you at some point. Why are you squeaking in Tima? And no, I'm not sure what's going on, but in team is running around on top, they're squeaking and not very happy. And it's normally the cry that they make when they want milk, but she seems a bit disconcerted about something. And, and Ribbon is obviously not looking exactly relaxed either. And is there we go, you see, it's now running this way. I'm not sure what's going on. As you can see, it's... Now, Ruben's up as well and watching. No. You're going to reposition to allow your little one to suckle. So there we go. It's like I say, it's the normal cry for milk. You can see it's hanging around right by the stomach. And so maybe it's just saying to Ruben, I want to suckle and you're not lying nicely for me. all is okay there's nothing too much that we have to worry about right well we're going to spend a little bit longer with the den because well it's been a quiet morning and this is just fantastic to spend time with them and there's lots of interaction and interesting things happening but while we spend time here let's go across to mr henry all the way in the missing mara and see how he's going and whether or not the hyenas there have raised chaos with those lines at that kill 